Hello, friends, and welcome to another video lesson from DBOS Talks. If you haven't subscribed yet, please click subscribe and click the bell so that you can be notified of new uploads. We're still in the playlist um, for all oh, Markdown tutorial, and this is the third video of that series. In this video, we'll be learning about the bells and whistles of Markdown. This is not all, but just a sampler of what other features are available in Markdown, okay? So we'll be continuing where we left off from the second video, which is what you see right now. Uh, to recap, uh, Markdown file, as an extension of MD, such as this file, and it can be created and edited using an ordinary text editor, such as Notepad, Notepad++, any other kind of text editor, okay? And then you can preview, after making your changes, you can preview how it would look like in Markdown by using an ordinary browser. In my case, I'm using Chrome. That's, um, if you will, follow my first video of this series, you'll be learning there how to set up your environment in um, using Chrome, the browser. Okay, so bells and whistles. Okay, let's start. So I'll be editing the same MD file that we have used in the previous two videos. Okay. So the, last, the first thing we'll be learning is how to display an image file. So we have, in previous videos, we've learned about simple, um, straightforward formatting commands for making headings, making something bold, italic, such kind of things. And then um, also list, different kinds of lists, ordered and ordered. Here, we will be learning how to display an image in Markdown. So first is that image file. Okay, so what I will do for simplicity I have put the image file, which can be, you know, can be a JPEG, can be a GIF, can be a PNG. So I put it, here it is, it's called MD underscore logo. It's an image file, JPEG. And I have put it just to make things simple, less complicated. It's in the same folder as the location of my MD file, the one called Markdown Belt and Whistles, which is the one we're looking at right now. So the image file I put in the same folder as the MD file. And if I will do a preview of this, this is how it would look. This is the image file, okay? So we want to display that image file in the MD file when we preview it in the Chrome browser. Right now, you don't see it. Okay. So I have now added it to the bottom. And if you will remember, the two hashes here means this is a H2 heading. Um, the biggest size being H1, this is H2. Next, bigger size. And some title here, display an image file. And this is the syntax for displaying an image file. So an exclamation mark or exclamation point and the word image inside a bracket or a square bracket, if you want to call it that. And then, and close in parentheses um, is the image files file name. In my case, m underscore logo dot JPEG, which I have shown you. Um, where is it? It's here, right? In the same location as the MD file. So now I will just um, go ahead and save my changes over here in the MD and then go to my browser, refresh, and scroll to the bottom. So that is, this was the heading we created, H2 heading. Remember H2, two hashes. So I surround the text with two hashes. That's H2 heading, which was discussed in the uh, first video. And then the next is displaying the image file. So we have this, the keyword is just image inside brackets. But at the beginning, there's an exclamation point or exclamation mark. And then after that, the file name of the image, the image file in parentheses. Okay. The next thing we'll do is still about the image file. So next is I'll display an image file, the same image file, but this time 
with a tooltip text. What is a tooltip text? You can call it differently, but what I mean is this. If you point your mouse at this image, because you may not know what this is. You just know it's an M and there's an arrow pointing down. You don't know anything much about it. So um, it would be helpful if you if you point at this image, it will tell you something, what it is, okay? That is a tooltip text. Um, in this case, the current one doesn't have it. So I have added it now. It's playing an image, it's playing an image with tooltip text. Um, so a little bit of difference here. This is how it would look. So I just added this part over here in close in double quotes, and that is the markdown logo, the words inside or enclosed by those double quotes are the words that will be displayed when you point your mouse at the image. So I have saved my changes and I will go now to the browser again and then I refresh this one. So the image will look exactly the same, no change, but the only difference is in the effect is that when you point your mouse at the image file, there it says something, markdown logo, okay? That's the, the one, the effect of what we have added here inside the parenthesis. This one, these words enclosed in double quotes. Okay, so that's image five. Next, we're gonna do is this. Still MD, still markdown. So again, I use a double hash, meaning this is a H2, H2. These words will be displayed in a much bigger font. I mean, same as the what you've seen here, same size as that, H2 heading. And then below that, um, we want to, so we want to create a link to our website, meaning display a link to our website. When I say link, I mean hyperlink that goes to a website URL. So here's some text that I wanna display on the page, on the MD file. Click here to visit DBOS Talks on YouTube. Again, the words are, Enclosed in brackets. After that, enclosed in parentheses is the full URL or address, web address of the website. Okay, HTTPS, etc. So I will save this now, and this should display a link on my refresh page. So I will refresh the browser now, and then here you will see the H2 heading I created, double hash, create a link to a website. And then below it is um, text in a different color to give you the obvious hint that this is something else. This is not like ordinary text. So in fact, it's a hypertext. So when you point your mouse at it, it becomes, it has, it shows the URL and it also becomes uh, the icon, the pointer icon becomes a hand, meaning it's clickable, right? And now we're gonna click this and see if it's live. So true enough, it, it sends me straight to the channel. It sends me straight to the URL that was shown on the MD file, right? Okay, I'll just click back. So that is after clicking on the link. It led me to the browser. And since I'm already all using the browser here, it just used that same browser, the Chrome, to display the website, okay? Go back to the MD file. So we've learned about displaying an image and then displaying a clickable link to a website. Next is this. Table. So displaying a table, um, straightforward. Um, we know that a table consists of columns and rows. It will have a column heading, preferably. So in this case, we are creating a simple table. You can give it a name, whatever you like. And it has two columns, unit. These are the column headings, unit and abbreviation. And then it has several rows to it. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. And then some skeletal um, way of doing, creating the table here. You just use a vertical bar, sometimes used called a pipe, okay? Pipe or vertical bar to separate the columns. Okay, nothing to separate the rows, but at least to separate the columns, you type uh, a vertical bar or a pipe. Okay, that's simple. 
And then you have the columns on the left on the first. This is the first column. Then separator is the pipe. And then the second column. Okay, now let's save this. And then go to your browser and refresh. Okay, so when you move down, scroll down, we have the table. Again, it begins with a H2 heading. Okay, so the H2 by using double hash around the text that we make into, we want to make into a H2 heading. And then here's the table to make the table um, no keywords used, sim simply the use of vertical bars or pipe. And this bit of um, a series of dashes separate the column heading from the rest, from the values. Okay, so we have um, a table consisting of two columns, unit abbreviation, these are the headings. And MD knows that because these are these are the column headings, it even though there is no obvious formatting done here, automatically they are set in bold while the values are just in regular format or text in regular format. So we have the two columns, we have the values there. And what other thing do we notice about this table? If you notice, um, it is similar to some current trend in many softwares that where in the rows are displayed in alternating color schemes. So you have here this row in white and next to it, there's a light shade of gray. Okay, so it's not just aesthetics, but it's really functional because one uh, purpose that comes to mind is when you are counting the rows, it will be easier to distinguish the rows when they are displayed in alternating colors like this, you know, different shade, different shade. You can target the odd numbered rows, you can target the even numbered rows. Okay, so in this short video, we've learned a couple of things, the bells and whistles, some of the bells and whistles of Markdown. And we started with how to display an image. And on top of that, we learned how to add the tooltip text to an image. When you point to it, it gives you, it shows you some text to describe what the image is all about. And then next we learn how to display a link, a hyperlink in Markdown. And in fact, it's clickable and it leads you to the website is pointed at, okay? And third and last, we learned about how to make a table um, consisting of columns and rows, obviously. And it is not that difficult to create a table in Markdown, as you can see. It, uh, it's just a matter of using vertical bars, also called pipes, and a series of dashes to separate the column heading from the rest of the values. And as you can see, if you wanted to add columns, it will just be a matter of adding this series of dashes and then another, something like this, right? So it's quite easy to expand the table vertically as well as horizontally. So there you have it, folks. Um, I hope you learned something new. If you haven't subscribed yet, please click subscribe right now as we will continue learning about Markdown. It's a relatively new way of documenting in the internet. You can make documents online or offline. It can also be used by people just taking notes. You're taking notes in school, at work, attending a seminar, attending a meeting. You can take notes on your text editor and then um, visualize it or preview it using your browser, okay? Thank you for watching and I hope uh, to see you in the next video.